Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Dave, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on, Tim. I like having a, a China expert who I can regularly uh, bring on the show. Where it's, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm stepping up to sort of Sky News level now. When whenever there's a, a geopolitical issue, I can I can <laughs> ring you up and and say, oh, I can can you come on my show for comment? Yeah, of course, anytime. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you wanted to talk about this spy? Oh well. <laughs> That's the latest uh, every week. Uh, there, there seems to be a, a new uh, revelation about uh, China's foreign attempted foreign uh, interference and influence in Australia. Should I say attempted or successful? It's, there, there's a fine line at times. It's been very successful. And, and, and I don't think many people uh, have grasped how many <laughs> spies have been in Australia for... Well, since the Korean War, they've had, oh, and, and the Vietnam War, the, these two wars were against China. Ever since then, China's been sending spies down here and trying to turn people. Uh, it was kind of funny seeing seeing this uh, 60 Minutes, you know, uh, dramatization of a spy, the, the, a spy that was subverting Hong Kong and Taiwan. And, and I bet a lot of Australians now are looking for this type of spy in Australia which is the most ridiculous thing ever because they're not going to pick that type of spy. They're going to pick someone that looks like you or me, or they're going to pick an Indian, or they're going to pick a South Korean. Uh, and and some, somewhat this 60 Minutes uh, little spoof uh, was not very helpful to the Australian people, in my opinion. Uh, if anything, it could have been an actor. Who knows? Yes, yeah, that's what I, I thought. thought. How do we know that uh, it's this is not just part of the ruse yeah how how is if you were to think about it that way let, let's let's not only double think let's triple think this and and think that the people in charge are a little give them a little bit more credit <laughs> than that they're not going to send some guy down here that the uh my opinion is lock the guy up interrogate the hell out of him waterboard the bastard and send him back and send his family back because I wouldn't trust them. Uh, you don't know. And and what happens? He, okay. Let's think about it this way. If we grab some Aussies that uh, Grandpa uh, was a digger, uh, they connected to Anzacs, and we send an Aussie that was born and bred here to China, and the Chinese people say, "Oh, do you like communism?" What do you think the Aussie's going to say? He's going to say, "I like." communism yes it's good because he doesn't want to get in trouble right are you going to believe him no uh do you love xi jinping the aussie's going to go yeah mate i i, I love xi jinping he's good china's good uh and it's the same in reverse people who have been brainwashed by communism and and xi jinping and they've been taught about the opium wars and the hundred years of humiliation as soon as they arrive in australia we go do you like democracy and they go yes Democracy good. Yes. And and then we just go, okay, well, I'll take your word for it. I trust you now. What a load of crap that is. How dumb are we? I could have had a Chinese spy uh, on my show not too long ago, for all I know. Um, I don't know about that. Well, part of the subversion is creating... Uh, weak-minded people like Paul Keating who actually believe it themselves. They're the most dangerous. They actually believe... Uh, Bob Carr as well, who... It was... I, I couldn't believe the, the interview he gave to Sky News. I think it, it might have been on the same day as the, the Keating address, uh, where he, he was having a go at Andrew Hasty for uh, comparing uh, China with the, with the Nazis when they helped us defeat the Nazis. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party wasn't in power during World War II. It was the nationalists of Gui Mingdang, uh, who were the government uh, at that mm. time. So it was a, a nice bit of, I think, spin and alternate history there by Bob Carr. Yeah, did, uh, did Bob Carr explain to the Hong Kong people who are of Han Chinese descent 
why they call China Chai Nazi, because that's what the Hong Kong democracy, uh, pro-democracy people are calling China right now. Oh, you mean those uh, violent and, uh, demonstrators who are burning things and well, they're, mm. they're, they're, the public are sending so much, so much against them that uh, uh, the, the, the pro-Hong Kong democracy candidates won over 80% of the votes in, in local government elections and the, uh, uh, the pro-China candidates got wiped out. Yeah, they were lucky to get a, v a voter turnout of 50 or 40 percent over the last decade, yet they had a voter turnout of over 70 percent, and 80 percent of that 70 percent voted uh, against the, the, the CCP members. Uh, these people must be so uh, easily manipulated by the CIA, right? Yeah, or who, um, like it might be the Koch brothers because mm. they want to ransack uh, China for all of its uh, capital. Yeah, I, I guess we know, we know that uh, there's also the Hong Kong, but we also know what's going on in Australia as well. Uh, and uh, we do get a little bit confused with Hong Kong, Taiwan, the same game plan, It's uh, we're playing on a different field here in Australia, they have to play uh, under different rules, and so therefore they're playing it, uh, they have to be far more under the radar here in Australia. And, and we know that it's happening, uh, but we also need to be able to take action. Like recently I, I investigated a milk tea uh, franchise and I'm hoping that some of my viewers are able to take some action on that. And uh, I, I believe that this is an economic war. It's not just a, it's not just, see, the taking, taking control of Australia's politics is really, it's about money and economics. There's a lot of people out there that say, okay, well, uh, you know, bankers' wars, every war's been a banker's war, and then they don't piece together uh, businesses in Australia are trying to create monopolies and subvert us from, from within, steal Australian jobs, send them abroad, steal money from Australians, uh, make it impossible for Australians to own a house, have a good job, uh, push, push things that uh, break up the family home and destroy us from within. Uh, this is all connected. Uh, and if you have a look at what's happening in Iran right now, they've, they've just started rioting because America has successfully blockaded them and they've run out of oil. And so now they're fighting amongst themselves. Uh, this is part of the same game plan for China to try and blockade us, make us fight amongst ourselves. And if we're not vigilant, uh, we could end up being the next Venezuela or Iran. Uh, we don't really want that. And that's what shows like this are about getting the message out, but don't just sit there, the people at home watching this, don't just sit there and uh, click the like button and leave a pretty comment. You need to do something. You, you need to actually do something real out there. And, and that, that does require you to send an email, a, a phone call. Uh, uh, I had a Hong Kong guy approach me in the street and, and he said to me, he said, look, uh, uh, his family in Hong Kong is starting to get frustrated with all the rioting and everything. And uh, and he, he was like, oh, can you just come over here so we can talk? I don't want to be seen with you. And I was like, look, you need to you need to speak up a little bit louder than that. And I just I, I looked looked around. I said, fuck China. I was like, you need to speak up. You need to yell. You need to let people know. Uh, don't be so coward in this country because uh, the subversion will reach your doorstep soon enough. Uh, and uh, that's the message for the Australian people. I've gone well, a bit of a rant. Sorry, <laughs> Blink, Tim. and you might uh, miss it. Uh, you mentioned uh, milk and tea before. We might be drinking a lot of or Chinese-owned uh, milk. Uh, it's uh, been announced today that uh, one of Australia's largest uh, dairy uh, operations uh, will be bought by uh, China's uh, biggest uh, dairy chain, which makes uh, some of Australia's uh, most uh, famous brands. It's called uh, China Meng Mengyu. Uh, so they'll 
they're, well, they're actually buying it uh, from a, a Japanese company, but uh, the, the 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 Japs uh, these days, well, <laughs> we we don't we don't consider them. We haven't considered them a, a hostile actor for uh, over over fifty years. But uh, this will include uh, lion. Uh, milk that uh, that uh, its brand includes dairy farmers which is uh, of course is one of australia's most iconic uh milk brands a uh, pure milk uh, i've certainly bought a lot of that uh, over the years a uh, dare and farmers union iced coffee i remember farmers union was at uh 15 years ago they made an extremely patriotic australian ad and well that's out the window big m of course one of the most famous uh flavored milk uh that that is now that's now going to be owned by by china uh vita soy soy milk and coconut milk so all the all the soy boys they're going to be buying it from from china a uh, daily juice that's a orange juice that i've bought that is that's going to be owned by by china juice brothers berry and uh yo play yogurt so you play, which of course is an Italian uh, yeah, sounding. Uh, well, it's it's all going to be owned by China now. For oh, it only costs six hundred million. That's that's pretty cheap to get a whole bunch of our milk, milk uh, iconic brands and and other uh, juices. When that happens, we need to make sure that every one of those companies continues to hire Australians. Uh, they don't just put. A Chinese CEO in there, change all the labeling to Chinese, hire Chinese workers within Australia so that they can uh, they can get their own colony within Australia and make them all rich and then send money to each other. Because that's what's happening with a lot of these businesses. And that's why I, I, I did an investigation on this uh, Chinese milk tea uh, uh, franchise called Hey Juice is because they only hire Chinese people. They only buy products from China and, and they expect Australian people to buy this product. That sounds quite and a racist uh, hiring policy. Well, that's exactly how it is. That's, exact, that's exactly how a colony behaves. Uh, there's there's uh, real estate agents within Australia who will give a lease to a Chinese person 25% less per week than uh, any other any other race. And, and if a Chinese person turns up to the inspection, they will racially choose the Chinese person and tell the other, say, Indian, black or white people to go away and say, sorry, this one's already been taken. They won't even take an application and waste their time. This is how the colony is uh, taking over Australia from within. They're subverting us from within. And then you've got Chinese people within the welfare office giving uh, disability and NDIS to Chinese nationals that are fresh off the boat. They're just milking us from within. Uh, Part of the this, pun. It, yeah, they're milking, yeah. It, well, this is serious. Uh, and I mentioned this to you before. I, I would like you you guys at home to yeah, hold check it out. up. Uh, nice and oh, yeah. so every all our audience can see it, yeah. or the ones who are watching on YouTube. Yes, a Stealth and War. Stealth War by Robert Spalding. This is the newest book. Uh, Robert Spalding is a Brigadier General in the Air Force. He was a uh, he used to fly those stealth bombers. Uh, he's also got a PhD in economics, and he talks about it literally i was reading the book and i was thinking i could have everything that he says it was like i was in an echo chamber i don't even need to read this because <laughs> we see eye to eye on everything there. uh and i recommend you guys at home read this uh this book and it's very similar to uh this one here by michael michael pillsbury i've mentioned this one before this one was where uh, Michael Pillsbury was really just trying to explain that China is the enemy, but uh, uh, Robert Spalding explains how the government uh, and the agencies within America are now subverted by China. So they've got so many sinophiles that it's hard to protect America's national security from within because there's so many 
are traitors. There's no other way to explain them. They're, they're, uh, describe them, I mean, the, 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 that America's flooded with traitors, he's saying, and that he had to uh, leave the government, write a book, and and just get involved in media because he, he fears for uh, the future of America. And Australia is so much worse. We're flooded with so many traitors. Uh, but United States are... uh, politics, uh, they, they seem to be uh, more concerned about uh, Russian interference from Russian bots, uh, Russian agents running for presidents. That's that that's their obsession there. They're, they're hardly talking about the wolf. I, I guess holding a, a, another style McCarthy hearings in, in Congress uh, for who who are sinophiles uh, in the, the government, as you put it. It's bipartisan now. It doesn't matter whether a, uh, a Republican or Democrat gets, in, uh, gets into office. Uh, they are going to be anti-China from now on. This is the future. This, this is where we're going. There's decoupling. We, we are officially in a Cold War right now. Uh, and it's only going to escalate depending on how China behaves. That's, Iran is Iran is one of those uh, gold nuggets. And Iran, the Iranians are now uh, burning the streets. They're rioting in the streets. They're... They're, they're burning down shops, and it only just started this week, and that is a direct result of uh, UK and America blockading Iran and trying to cut off their oil supply. They've, 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 uh, they're, they're having trouble refining their own oil, and uh, the general population is having trouble uh, refueling their cars, and so they're, they're becoming really angry right now. And and that's part of the game plan. We are in a serious geopolitical cold war right now. And it's been going on for a very long time, but the West has only just started to take some serious action. And it's amazing how many Australians, well, it, it's not really that amazing. If, if you're in Australia and you're not fully aware of the gravity of the situation, you won't be until it knocks on your front door it's hard to see from here and especially when the australian media is only doing what they're told uh the australian media is full of idiots and they have been forever pretty much uh I'd say uh, that uh, because yeah. I was impressed by the the well it wasn't just sixty minutes because nine uh, entertainment now owns uh, the Fairfax newspapers so they were in this age of where the the mainstream corporate media is is losing because of all of the 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 online digital competitors, they they were able to pull all the resources resources together uh, to put uh, put to it like they had a a big uh, expose in the Fairfax papers that morning and then the 60 minutes uh, program it was the full episode and 60 minutes it's gone from doing sort of fluff pieces on celebrities and uh, human interest stories to a full episode on uh, talking to this uh, spy and other examples of, of foreign interference. Uh, the, a couple of weeks back it did one about the, the, the Jeffrey Epstein uh, pedophile saga. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's clear to you that uh, you, you, you weren't uh, impre as impressed as, as others were. They're not exactly doing any real investigative journalism, are they? They're, well, they, 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 they went to, they said they went to Hong Kong and they, they, they went through documents and addresses and spoke to secret sources. It all sounded like, because, yeah, the, he basically went in between the reporter, uh, Australia and Hong Kong, like would have put, uh, they've still got the budget these days to, to put together a, a 40 minute uh, story over over a number of months, of course, and you don't have that luxury. Yeah, they they mentioned the uh, the the forbidden book store. Uh, yes, the book the uh, kidnapping. Uh, are you able to? Do, uh, have you looked into that? Can you? Yeah, of because course, obviously, that's not, sixty that's minutes. Not 
yeah 60 minutes obviously Sorry. told a lot of people about that for the first time but obviously you're the expert uh, on this so yeah, just... uh, yeah that wasn't anything new. that that was that was that was big news a long time ago uh, they just they just disappeared and no one knew where they went and then a month later a few of them appeared on um on uh, state-run news in china <laughs> and uh they, they were apologizing for selling all of these forbidden books. Uh, a lot of these forbidden books you can't buy in Australia too, by the way, which is a little bit frustrating. Or I would have them all behind me just to annoy the pricks that watch my channel. Uh, <laughs> They'll be watching now. Some so the, some of the books were, uh, there, there was, there was, it's more like tabloids. So just say, uh just say yeah, with the monarchy uh princess diana and they someone wrote a book about it or or someone in the the, the king or queen's nephew's gay or something like that you know it's like tabloid news that was pretty much it uh there was a there was an actress called uh uh bing bing and she was apparently having an affair with one one of the ccp members that were high up uh i i would that, I believe that they, they showed a lot of photos of these two hanging out, but it was banned within China. And then the tabloids in this Causeway Bay bookstore, they, they would put it together and create books and then uh, sell them to the Hong Kong people. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, Chinese people just crossing the border to try and get hold of these books and bring it back because it was gossip and pe everybody likes gossip. Uh, and so as the, the, the CCP is, they don't like this type of uh, controversy getting out. They, they want them to be seen as gods, like uh, Kim Jong-un is. And, and that's part of their arrogance and part of the reason why they're, they're it's part of their, the, the problem here and the problem in Hong Kong as well. It's because they won't, they're not seen as real or human and, and they, don't, they want to be seen as above everybody else. And, and they like to learn from Britain, the British Empire, and how America became great. But they didn't learn that uh, the, the British monarchy had to become more real. Uh, the, the queen were, became a mechanic and she was, uh, she was doing oil changes on cars. But the, the CCP, the government, they want to be seen as above the commoners. And that's part of their downfall. And it's happened throughout history in China as well. Obviously, there's been a lot of scrutiny on the, the treatment of the, the Uyghur Muslims in uh, Xinjiang province. And that's basically because, well, obviously, they have concerns that they, they could be influenced by Islamic extremism. But it's it's more that uh, they, they don't like the, the Chinese Communist Party, that these people have their own distinct cultural identity and religious practice and so these well they've been called cultural genocide camps re-education camps are basically to uh, erase their culture and make them love the the chinese communist party and of course there was that amazing leak to the new york times the first bit of real journalism well you wouldn't call it journalism they just got documents like wikileaks and julian assange used used to get uh, uh from it was obviously leaked by somebody in the the chinese communist party which was quite unprecedented and it has a lot of quotes from uh Xi Jinping where he says the party must unleash the tools of dictatorship show absolutely no mercy in its eradication of extremists and it, it goes down here that uh, those infected by extremism would require a period of painful interventionary treatment lest uh, they have their conscience destroyed lose their humanity and murder without blinking an eye, which is, well, it's, it pretty much seems like a monster, uh, Xi Jinping. Like, that is pretty, like, he must not have any type of soul. One thing I think is quite interesting is how the Jokowi Widodo, uh, the Indonesian president, has been so conveniently quiet, uh, considering he's the president of the the largest Muslim population in the world, uh, and they're right on our doorstep. Uh, you would think that he would 
be speaking up against China about this, but he has quite conveniently been quiet about it. And that tells me, and that should be a big warning to the Australian people what's to come when it comes to Indonesia as well. And, and Jokowi Widodo, uh, it's not really a tangent. I think these, these are connected. Uh, he's also bringing in some new laws to prevent uh, people saying anything bad about the Indonesian uh, government at all, or you can be locked up. Uh, they haven't been passed yet, but these are new laws that he's working on. Uh, and I, I think we need to be aware that it's not just uh, a, an authoritarian regime within China, but it seems like there is uh, like a disease. It's like this is catching on with some of our neighbours and we don't want our neighbours to become authoritarian regimes but it seems like some of them are becoming more authoritarian by having economic connections to China. But the, the mainstream media tells us in uh, ABC Q&A that it's the uh, Western nations that are becoming more uh, fascist through uh, extreme nationalist uh, ideologies like uh, Marine Le Pen in, in, in France and uh, the, the AFT alternative for Deutschland uh, in uh, Germany and Viktor Orban in Hungary and uh, obviously the nationalists uh, in in Poland apparently that's the the real concern for the future of the the uh, Western world well if you look at Poland Germany you look at these countries look at where they are on the map uh, the Germans haven't forgot about World War two the Germans want to sell their BMWs and the Mercedes to well, the largest market in the world. Where's that? 1.4 billion Chinese. So uh, the Germans are starting to become, you know, playing a little bit of, uh, you know, they're, they're shaking hands with the Chinese. The Italians, the Italians were fascists. Remember Mussolini? Yes. Uh, the Italians have signed up to the uh, Belt and Road Initiative. That port is now controlled, not really controlled, but it is connected directly to China uh, and now they need another country. Germany works out perfectly. Poland is now, if you go look at Poland on the map, they're very close to Ukraine. They're very close to the entrance towards Russia. And uh, part of the reason why a lot of this uh, infiltration of Europe is uh, possible is because uh, their, their, their economies aren't doing too well. So therefore China can easily buy their way in and money, money equals power. Uh, you look at Paris, Paris is burning. Just look at all these places on the map, look at what's happening in them and try to figure out, uh, who they're becoming friends with. The, Br the British aren't really doing too much to fight back. They don't really have the economy to uh to win friends in europe at the moment if anything they've gone internal and uh they're playing a little bit more mercantilists uh so they don't have that influence and that's kind of what's happening you look at britain you look at france uh you look at uh japan these are the countries that uh were involved in the the opium wars China knows about that, and so they, they're becoming good friends with their enemies. South Korea, Germany, Italy. This is not an accident. It's, it's all, look at it on the map and look at how China's playing the world off against each other. Uh, you can yes. see what I'm getting, right? Yeah. In Australia, uh, or this uh, discussion about our relationship with China uh, going forward, it was it was really uh, kickstarted and put into the national uh, spotlight by uh, liberal uh, backbencher Andrew Hasty with his uh, op-ed uh, in uh, the the Fairfax Papers back in I think it was around about uh, late August, and basically since then uh, this has become a political wedge uh issue because well labor uh, party 
uh, they have always been a bit more friendly to uh, China and all. Oh, it was their, their former uh, Senator Sam Dastiari. Uh, he, uh, his relationship with or well, now uh, banned uh, from Australia Chinese being the businessman Kuang Jangmo was uh, revealed and uh, he was parroting uh, Chinese talking points on the South China uh, Sea. But uh, we, we learned that, uh, well, Dastiari wasn't just some uh, naive, uh, foolish, uh, brash, uh, young whippersnapper who got just caught up in, in raising money there before New South Wales uh, Independent Commission Against Corruption that they, they laundered uh, New South Wales Labour Party from this Kwang Jangimo, a hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, donations in a an Audi bag, which they attributed to just local uh, oh, local Chinese workers. The, the, these people who were donating five thousand dollars when it was clearly uh, when the electoral commission went went through an audit that uh, they couldn't have donated uh, this money. That of course led to the downfall of the the New South Wales uh, Labor Secretary Kayla. Uh, Manane, and that exposed just how just how deep the uh, uh, New South Wales Labor was uh, reliant on these Chinese donations. Then, of course, there was uh, Gladys uh, Liu, her the the new Liberal MP for for Chisholm, uh, which is where the, allegedly the Chinese Communist Party wanted to fund a, a Manchurian candidate or a Mandarin candidate with this luxury car dealer, Bo Nick uh, Zaho, who uh, he joined the Liberal Party in 2015, was in the electorate area of Chisholm. He was approached by allegedly another uh, local Chinese businessman, Brian Shen, and uh, Zaho was found dead in a motel room uh, in Mount Waverley in, in March this year. The cause of death is, is unknown, but uh, it's suspected that he was assassinated by the uh, uh, the Chinese, but uh, obviously Gladys Liu, her her community uh, Chinese community links, which they all go back to China's uh, United Front, and obviously her interview with with Andrew Bolt, where she said she couldn't recall all of these, and then there was a lot of questions about her fundraising, where the Victorian Liberal Party had to had to give some money back uh, because uh, they weren't uh, they, uh, uh, they weren't 100% sure that this money didn't come from uh, Chinese Communist Party uh, agents, and uh, Malcolm Turnbull was discouraged from attending a fundraiser with her when she was just a normal party member because uh, ASIO had concerns about the uh, the guest list. So a lot of people s still think, well, they they got their uh, their Manchurian Mandarin candidate in 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 Gladys uh, Liu. Um, but uh, for now, it's just uh, these uh, associations that she needs to uh, clean up. Though it didn't help her that uh, she was at uh, Box Hill uh, when the the local police station was raising the the Chinese Communist flag on the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. She was blowing out the candles on a Chinese uh, Communist flag uh, cake uh, in the area, uh, and uh, obviously Labour attacked uh, the the Liberals uh, for that. And uh, even though a few months ago they were attacking Andrew Hasty for, for basically uh, doing this irresponsible uh, 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 op-ed, putting our diplomatic relations at risk, but uh, Andrew Hasty was, uh, con well, was hyped up in the media last month that he was going to go on a study tour to China to confront the, the, the Chinese Communist Party and tell them to their face what he thought of them. Uh, Andrew Hasty, being a former SAS uh, uh, officer, obviously that sort of made a good sort of media spectacle. And uh, James Patterson, Liberal senator, uh, was was going uh, with him. I initially feared that maybe uh, they'd go missing in in China, or they were they were going to be held hostage. But uh, uh, China Matters, the study tour uh, uh, organizer, said that. Uh, uh, their, their visas were denied and uh, they, they'd be allowed to visit uh, as long as they repented for what they'd said and uh, they, they threw in a whole thing that China's been colonized before and you get this neocolonialism out of your head but it had the effect of uniting Penny Wong she condemned China for denying the the visas to elected uh, Australian politicians and even Richard Dean and Harley the Greens leader and so this I guess, I guess this 
I would say, political football about our future relationship with China. I mean, Bob Carr and Paul Keating, yes, they're former Premier and Prime Minister, respectively, but they're not there anymore. There seem to be, I think, a, a less political point scoring, and you sort of saw a bit of a more bipartisanship that, yes, we need to seriously rethink how we're going to deal with this nation now. Whenever the Australian politicians go over to China, their phones will be hacked and their laptops will be hacked. I'll tell you a little bit of my own personal story. I, I was in Guangzhou and uh, I was out not for a very long time. Uh, my laptop was inside a safe. And when I came back, I turned my laptop on and it was entirely wiped. Now, uh, someone had got into my hotel, into my safe, and wiped every piece of information off my uh, laptop. They were probably running out of time because I was, wasn't out very long. And this type of uh, in, in intelligence gathering can happen through uh, Wi-Fi networks in hotels, if you drop your phone anywhere and it's out of sight for a few minutes, they have a way of infiltrating it. And, and uh, so I hope they, they are aware of that. I'm sure they would be. Uh, the other factor is what happens is uh, the, when you're, you're part of a think tank and you're discussing China, what they often say is, okay, well, you've been denied a visa to China. You haven't been to China in five years. What do you know about China? You know, you're no longer a China expert, and that's part <laughs> of China's plan. That's part of China's plan. They, they actually deny visas to academics in America and Australia every day. And the reason is, is because it discredits you. You don't know what you're talking about anymore. Well, that's their uh, intention, but... You really yes. think that uh, a study tour, uh, uh, you're, you're going to get the, the the full story? I mean, seriously. Well, that, that argument is played out amongst academics in Western universities. Well, that and is, think, if, 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 yeah, if that it's, goes it's, on, that it's, is ridiculous. It's, it's real, it's a real, it's a real thing. And, and uh, so that's how China turns uh, Western academics, they go over there, they're, they're like uh, puppy dogs, they get they get some uh, young guy in his 20s that is, uh, uh, you know, he's a, a postdoc, he's just arrived and uh, they, the billionaires take him out and drive him around in a Bentley and they, uh, they send a lot of pretty girls his way, you know, he, he, and, and uh, it's like a puppy dog, give him lots of treats, teach him how to sit, he comes back loving China and uh, uh, they're the most dangerous. They're like, you know, because they they love China uh, independently. They haven't been told to love China. Uh, they're, they're in fact the most dangerous. Uh, and the people who are supposedly anti-China aren't allowed in the country. And, and so the pro-China people, they come back and say, look, you haven't been there, it's changed. You know, things have changed now. You, you, you've never been there in the last five years or ten years. What would you know about China? I was there last week. And that's how China manipulates the narrative within Western countries. Uh, and, and the next level is, if we can't get rid of... You will like uh, Gladys Liu ha hanging up, uh, celebrating the CCP at a police station in Australia... Uh, she can say she's pro-democracy and loves Australia all she wants. She's a CCP prick. She's a spy. She's she's pushing their narrative within my country. And if we can't get rid of her, imagine how uh, it would be impossible to get rid of an Australian-born Chinese who has been offered one of these $50 degrees in uh, Tsinghua University, goes over there for, you know, pays for their flights over there, free accommodation, 50, 50 Australian dollars, comes back with a university degree, brainwashed, and uh, tries to get into Australian politics, which is the future of Australia. Uh, it would be impossible to get one, get rid of one of those. 
Well, uh, Section no. 44 of the Australian Constitution, which uh, it talks about dual uh, allegiance, I, I don't think it's ever been tested whether you, you how do you, you, you basically have to, because it's easy with dual citizenship, you've got two citizenships, but would you have to, under Section 44, basically have to convict some, uh, like an elected politician of treason or espionage to get them disqualified? It makes this whole situation that we're in very difficult. And I think we need to focus on, and this is why I focus on uh, the discriminatory tr uh, hiring practices, because this, this country, their economy is 18, 20 times larger than Australia's. <laughs> think about that for a second. It is a huge economy. And they are buying out, as you mentioned, uh, the milk companies, but they're buying out everything else. Uh, and if they are allowed to get away at the, 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 the bottom level, the, the milk tea uh, franchises, they're allowed to get away with these discriminatory trade practices, uh, hiring practices, sorry. They, that will go all the way to the big monopolies in the future. And, and that's something that will impoverish everyday Australians and and they're not as the and it's one of the the big factors I believe that we need to be focusing on is because uh, it's almost it just feels like it's almost impossible to stop and and we do a lot of talking but we're not taking a lot of action and that's why uh, I made that video exposing hey juice and asking my viewers to uh, call the Fair Work Ombudsman and the ATO and try to get some media coverage for this is because uh, if, if we can't do this with a small little milk tea franchise, <laughs> how much, how, how difficult will it be later on? Uh, and, and by the way, China, we, we see China as this, uh, this country full of kind of economic slaves, cheap labor, etc. But China is now looking for cheap labor in other countries. I know it blows your mind that one of the, the cheapest places full of factories is now branching out and trying to create economic slaves in other countries. The Chinese aren't really that hard working at all. It's just that the majority uh, have to work hard to feed themselves <laughs> and the people at the top uh, are slave drivers. That's pretty much it. But they're moving into poorer third world countries, and that's part of the uh, Belt and Road Initiative. They're trying to create economic slaves through th third world countries. And if Australia doesn't be vigilant right now, we will be their economic slaves. Uh, and that's the future. That's the future fl plan for Australia is to uh, create big factories and uh, have us toiling in the dirt, sending all the resources back to China for free and putting together their their little trinkets and creating factories down here. And that would just make them, uh, it would make them so happy that they've got, uh, they've got the revenge for the opium wars and the hundred years of humiliation. And that's what they want. It seems that, yeah, they they've got a very long memory of, of history. The uh, Chinese Communist Party leadership and it's almost what you've just described there as, as some sort of sadistic historical uh, revenge uh, who's uh, colonizing who now uh, who's exploiting who now how the tables have turned more ha 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 it seems that way but the world is far more malevolent than you could ever imagine there's a lot of bad stuff that happens out there that the media and their, you know, their pretty little pictures, they don't tell you the, the mean things that happen out there. Iran is now burning and the people are killing each other and there's like a little civil war going on. Do you think people are covering that? Have Does any of your viewers in the comments, have they heard They'll of probably that? mention it it's for a maybe a couple of minutes on, on Sky News during the news bulletin. Yeah. That's probably about it. There's, there's not going to be a dedicated segment of, say, of... Oh, Maybe, uh, on Credlin and Paul Murray Live. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's a mean world, and, and, and uh, this is our doing. This is the Western countries. And don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I really don't 
care because they're our enemy. That's how the world is. This is a zero sum cold war that we are in right now. And you think that turning the average Australian and taking them out of the finance industry and and uh, teaching them how to wash dishes or dig holes isn't something that uh, the CCPP wants to do. They don't want you to be educated. They don't want you to have a good job. That this is this is the future. This is where it is all happening, and it's happening uh, under the noses of the Australian people. Uh, when I was at the front of the Apple store. I was abused by sinophiles in the media. Uh, what I was trying to say was buy an Apple phone. Don't buy a Samsung uh, or one of these uh, Huawei, Oppo, Vivo or mm. Xiaomi phones. Uh, every cent is being sent to this evil dictatorship that is now building bases off the coast of Australia with the same plan of um, blockading us the same way we blockaded Iran just then. Mm. Uh, that's the future. Do you think they would care? I don't really care what happens in Iran. No offence to the Iranians out there. But do you, do you think they care if that happens to us? Well, that's why there's... There, obviously, it's reported in our media as a negative thing, the return of nationalism in Western nations. But... All, a lot of the the Western nations and the or the superpowers, the the neocons who've who've been in been in charge in in the in the United States have seen themselves as globalist uh, Wilsonians spreading peace and democracy in the in the world, and that's why you're seeing. I'm not sure if you've been following the the Groper War, but uh, that that is basically we need to put uh, America first. No dual allegiance and, and and loyalties and like, like you just said with the iranian people i and, not, and no offense to them but you're australia first you want to save your country well we we are part of a team and that's team blue iran is part of team red they're they're our enemy they 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 want to send they want to they want to buy and sell oil and send it to china and russia uh, they want to feed this massive behemoth on our doorstep. They are officially our enemy. Uh, but the nationalism discussion, how about, how's this for a way, way to look at it? Every, every immigrant that comes from, you know, arguably third world countries, when they arrive in Australia, are they really loyal to Australia? Or are they just here for the cash? Uh, well, that's what it seems to be a lot of these days, that we're just seeing <laughs> economic migration. We're definitely not seeing <laughs> integration or assimilation. And I talked about this on my, my last show with, with Blair Cottrell, uh, that you can just set up a, a set-top box with Mandarin or, or Hindi stations and live like you were in your your homeland uh, uh just that you've got all the the economic benefits of being uh in another country you're basically living as a citizen abroad laissez-faire and democracy and all of those goodies the uh you know uh, land rights the, these are things that we created in the west these are these are things that made the West great. And, and then we have people that come from third world shitholes and they're third world shitholes for a very good reason because they're mercantilist. They, they don't respect land rights. They don't respect freedom, laissez faire. They don't, they don't, they don't allow them to, uh, there's too many uh, extractive uh, economies where they they just extract from people that become wealthy that's really partly China as well this is when people come from that type of environment they bring that mentality with them and the problem is that uh, when there's too many of them they have that communist extractive uh, economy mindset and they bring it with them uh, if there's a, a little drip drip uh, approach to uh, immigration, they, they, they learn what is right and what is wrong. Uh, they, they learn that our way 
has been superior and, it's, and, and it is the best way for a very good reason. Uh, they come here for a better life. But when we have so many, go, come for a walk down George Street with me one day. Uh, this place is a third world shithole. I'm the minority. I walk around and no one speaks English. Uh, and, and the majority of them, how's this for a conversation? I, I've been I've been fuming over this conversation all week. I had a, a conversation with an Indian lady and uh, she said, uh, oh, Lee, that's, uh, you know, where's that name from? I was like, look, look, I, my, my uncle fought in Vietnam and, and I, I'm, I've, I'm, I don't know how many generations deep in Australia. My great grandfather was a, uh, he was one of those guys that climbed the the, uh, the 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 Sydney Harbour Bridge and was had the gloves and was heating up the the uh, you know the rivets and bang them in there and and uh, you know what she said to me she goes not with a name like that you didn't just dismissed me it has no respect for this country or me and and uh, the this is what happens when you have too many people come in and, and they're just here for the cash. Uh, if Australia goes under tomorrow, that mongrel will just get on the next flight back to India. Uh, well, politicians and in Australia are certainly not concerned about uh, that. Uh, they, 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 uh, Peter Dutton brags, we got the, the annual migration intake reduced from 190,000 to 160,000. Uh, this year, or, or we don't want to have a, a discriminatory immigration policy that's uh, un-Australian and uh, illiberal, and uh, of course, uh, big business. So I don't think, people say they want cheap labour, I don't think that that's actually true. They want flexible labour. Like, for example, like if you just go to the doc uh, a lot of doctor's clinics, half the staff are, uh, are Indian. Obviously, doctors get paid uh, a lot, but they want the employers, the, 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 the flexi flexibility. And there's talked about, oh, we need the uh, skills, skilled migrants because there's school shortages and that, like we couldn't. And nothing against these, these doctors. They've obviously studied medicine and they're, they're, they're very competent. They've got, they've got expertise, but 50 years ago, I'm sure we had great <laughs> Australian European doctors why did we need to import them that's sort of not what uh 457 visas that sort of thing was about we have not been looking after the australian population it's a the, the government has sold out the people uh and that's pretty much it in china uh if i go to china what what jobs can i do i can one teach english the second job i can do uh teach English. Uh, the only other job I can do is start up a, uh, my own startup and uh, bring, you know, money into China. It's the only way I can get a job over there, but they protect their own people. And in the cities, they have Chinese only hotels, Chinese only apartments that are cheaper. The thing is, they do the same thing in Australia. <laughs> now, uh, the people who are losing out economically are the Australian people. Now, now this brings me to the most important part here is I've been speaking to, you know, a lot of Aussies, of course. Uh, my channel gets a lot of views. I get a lot of emails. Um, and it's got to the stage where who cares about Australia anymore? Now, this is a, this is a, big, a big point I would like to make here. We're getting to, this is very serious, actually. Uh, it's not, not a joking topic that I'm talking to you about now, Tim. This is very serious. Uh, one of the most controversial things I think I've ever said is that what happens when people like you and me, we realize that we can't do anything anymore? What, what happens when we, we already have a lot of skepticism about our politicians and our media. But what happens when we realize it's too late? Do you know what I'm trying to say here? Like I, 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 even, I even walk around George Street sometimes and I've got some rubbish in my hand. And I think, you know, I, I used to be a surfer. 
I hate people that litter. But now I think it's not really my country anymore. I'll throw it on the ground. Someone else can pick it up. It's not my country anymore. This is not my country. So I don't care anymore. You know what I'm trying to say here? And how many Australians are starting to feel that nihilism creep in where you start to think, this is not my country. Let them clean it up because it's their country now. Well, you're you seeing that uh, in the in the state of uh, California, which well, it's got homeless tents everywhere. There's in San Francisco, people literally shitting in the street, the most unhygienic thing you can think of. And, and California is just one of 50 states in the United States, but it's the, the biggest one. And of course, it's, it's seeing the biggest uh, demographic uh, change and replacement. And this is what the America First advocates have been talking about. It used to be a red state. Now, it's basically a, a one-party blue state. Well, we don't really want Australia to get to that point. And I don't think that the politicians realize what something simple like me walking down George Street thinking, should I throw this wrapper in the bin? Do I care about Australia enough to do that anymore? Like, when was the last person fined for littering? That's that's the other thing I was thinking of. Does that even happen anymore? Like if you just throw your trash on the, the, the ground in the street, like police ever... It's not they... really... This is not really a rubbish or trash or environment. Uh, this is not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something bigger. I'm talking about the point where we realize that it's not our country anymore and that we, we don't care anymore. We, that's, when, that's when revolution happens and that's when everybody suffers. I'm not here talking about these topics uh, lightly. There's a lot of nihilism amongst the real Australian people. And when we when you start mentioning you know, immigrants coming here and uh, taking jobs and, and just being here for the money, what happens when uh, the money runs out? What happens when uh, Medicare, uh, we can't fund Medicare anymore? Well, we you know what uh, happens but, then. It becomes tribal warfare. And that's, and that's something that not only me, but I dare say millions of Australians are starting to feel today. And that is where the government needs to start taking action right now, because we don't want to turn into Paris. We don't want to turn into Hong Kong. And, and, and people might think that my little chats with you are some lighthearted little uh, tabloid bullshit, but it's not. This is real. This is our lives we're talking about, Tim. And the people at home, I, don't, I, I hope they're aware of the gravity. I don't sit here and read these books for nothing. This is not, I don't, I don't read all these. I, so you can sit I, around I, and feel smart, which uh, some people read books for. I, I could, there's so many other things I could be doing with my time, but I, I, see, I, I see an end play happening here. And that end, it doesn't matter if you've got a PhD. It doesn't matter what business you're running. If people are burning the streets down out the front of your door, that's, that's the future I see for Australia, is what's happening in Iran and Venezuela right now. I would much rather be focusing on, uh, you know, making money and, and, and working on my own PhD. Yeah, why picket Instead fences, of... raising your family in suburbia? Exactly. But it's at the point now where the average Aussie doesn't see this as their own country anymore. And we're the only ones keeping it together because no one else gives a shit. And that's that's when this that's when it gets serious. And, and that's part of the reason why I talk about these topics. Um, well, let's bring it back to the the mainstream view, and that the reason why we should be so threatened by China is because it's 
not a uh, democracy. It's a, well, it's still called a communist state, but it's basically a fascist state, which well, doesn't have democracy, is led by a dictator for life, and uh, is putting its own citizens in what are concentration camps. And there's all of these Facebook filters, solidarity with the Hong Kong protesters. And if we can just uh, get at least preserve democracy in Hong Kong, then there's hope to free the the rest of the 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 Chinese people. And of course, then there's the sort of speculation: what what is China going to do as these protests uh, get uh, uh, more and more uh, assertive, and there's there's more uh, violence because everyone's thinking: will there be a Tiananmen Square uh, 2.0? There is some people who believe that maybe China will just cut their losses and let Hong Kong be a democracy because they don't need it like they did 22 years ago when uh, they took charge of it from the British. No, Hong Kong is run by China and uh, they can ruin as many lives as they want. It's going to remain under their control. The problem is when we start thinking, oh, okay, well, we can let the, the, the refugees in uh, from Hong Kong, uh, and they come over here, and then we have more troubles here. We run it. We run out of road. We're at the end of the road. We're the cul-de-sac. Australia's the cul-de-sac at the end of this Chinese road. And once it all uh, ends up here, uh, it's not going to look very pretty, is it? We we don't have Australians that are willing to kick out politicians like Gladys Liu or do anything about cheating Chinese businesses like Hey Juice. Uh, what happens when something serious happens? What happens when Medicare cannot be funded? Uh, gra grandma dies from an illness because she can't get to the hospital. Uh, how many uh, immigrant parasites are sitting on the old age pension right now? Our economy is in a deficit right now. Uh, all it will take is one good little shock from uh, the Chinese Navy to try and disrupt our trade routes. And it will cause so much trouble to this country. It doesn't matter how smart you are or hardworking you are. Um, you can't get out of that. There's a lot of people with PhDs now that are avoiding the the Molotov cocktails in uh, uh, Iran today, right now. They're, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with their children. The electricity's off. This is geopolitics. Uh, and and Iranian, Iran's full of Iranians. They, they can band together, but Australia's Australia is not really full of Australians. I I very rarely see and I saw a guy with an Aussie jersey on today. I said, "Whoa, it's good to see an Aussie jersey. I haven't seen one of those in years." And he laughed <laughs> um, uh, because there's 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 not too many people left in Sydney that are loyal to Australia. Uh, it's kind of sad. Well, I was quite uh, horrified. This was way back in, in 2012 when I attended the Australian soccer team uh, playing a World Cup qualifier against uh, Saudi Arabia. And I would say at least a third of the stadium were Saudi Arabia supporters. They were really loud and boisterous. And I was sort of like, where have you all come from? And of course, Saudi Arabia is, well, it gives China a run for its money with its human rights abuses and like they're all dressed in quite western uh, attire the, the 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 saudi arabians in the in the crowd and it sort of uh, hit me that uh, how dare you come here uh from a a sharia law dictatorship and come into what well, because it's obvious it's not just some away supporters there was a huge contingent there and they were gladly cheering on their their their, their team. I would I would say quite uh, I would I would say it was quite uh, in your face. And this was 2012, and I just wondered well, who was sending them there. How were this, were these all Saudi Arabian students uh, in Australia? And yeah, I just couldn't yeah. believe it. So if you're an 18 year old Aussie and you've been taught, you know, you've been, you've been taught about the, the, the fair go and uh, egalitarianism. And on your first job, 
you you turn up and there's a few immigrants from some shithole and they're mistreating you because of the color of your skin. Uh, then you go to university, which is subverted by uh, the Chinese, and you have feminist bullying white men in the universities. Uh, you're going to grow up to be a bitter, angry, possible future terrorist of Australia. And that's part of my overarching vision of Australia, which I'd like to prevent. But we can't prevent it unless the people that come here understand that egalitarianism doesn't mean that you come here, you get all the free goodies and you take, take, take. It means you need to give a little as well. And because we've had such a flood, uh, uh, this is an economic problem. This is not just a cultural problem. It's, it's the, the reason why... Well, I'm not a, I just a liberal democracy problem. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think it, I think this is, I don't think it's, I think if you're rich, I, look, I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter what religion you are or what political affiliation, if you have a job, you can have a family, you can own your own house and you can, you can get by with almost anything as long as you have enough money and money is very important. Uh, it's very important. And, and, and that's part of the part of the reason why Australia has avoided this type of civil strife. But we are heading towards uh, economic strife. And we have 200 and what is it, 250 years now almost of little to no economic strife. Uh, our country has not become, ha we don't have the ability to deal with it. Whereas most of the countries around us, if they were to be hit with some sort of economic strife, they'd be able to deal with it with some, to some extent. But uh, imagine the average, uh, the average Aussie turning up, doing the nine to five job, has a, has a nice house, next thing you know, overnight, cannot afford to feed his kids. Um, all the stresses with all that, people snap. And, 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 and there's a lot of there's a lot of that slowly creeping into Australia, and and I'm dearly concerned with how we're going to deal with it. Yes, and our I will finish on this. Our, our politicians they they literally don't know what to, what to do about this. This is why they're 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 at Parliament this week, and I I don't think they have a plan. They're just used to just going through the motions every every three years and they're sort of thinking oh shit the the country's on the line and politicians mm -hmm. at the end of the day they're uh, they they are answerable to the people and if the people make them afraid enough then it'll jolt them into action but of course then you have uh these seats such as chisholm in melbourne which you could vote for uh Gladys Liu with all of her uh CCP community links we could vote for Jennifer Yang with all of her CCP links and then of course there's Reed in New South Wales another swing multicultural seat there's also uh above Sydney Harbour there is uh, Benelong as well which is uh qu a, quite a it's it's a diverse electorate of different Asian ethnicities, but I remember uh, Reed uh, Craig Laundy was the local member. He said that we couldn't have uh, free speech uh, in Australia because his constituents uh, didn't like it, and so our our, our politicians they they're, they're going to have to do a lot of thinking and make uh, tough uh, decisions. And yeah, you're basically like probably. This this is probably a, a hyperbolic example, but you're like John F. Kennedy now in the the Cuban Missile Crisis. How do you avert uh, the the world on the brink or Australia on the brink? Because it's it, it's it's it, the all the because it is a Cold War. But I would say in this situation, the you, you're keeping everything in in a bottle for the moment. But eventually, there's going to be this pressure where the the bottle just pops. Yeah, like if I see a, a young Aussie, some like young, young Aussie teenage boys walking around, I'm like, I ask them, how are you going? You know, what, what are your plans for the future? What are you going to do? I've, I've never really met, I haven't really met too many that, that uh, have concrete plans for the future. 
I, I, I speak to, I speak to them. I, I met one guy recently, he was 18, and he was saying how, you know, he's planning on going to university, you know, he's got, he's got some big plans. Uh, but the majority of the time I'll see these these kids with the uh, the funny hats on and the little shorts and the, the bum bags and and uh, they they look like they're drug dealers or something and I ask them about their family and things like that and it's uh, the future's looking kind of bleak if this is the next generation of Australians because if they they're not going to university and getting a good job and they're not focusing on, uh, having a family and uh, uh, having some sort of a civil future, you know, some sort of respectable future, uh, that's not exactly the type of retirement I want to live in. I don't, I don't want to be 70 years old and uh, be bashed for my wallet on, on the walk down to the shops. Uh, and, and, and that's where we're heading. Uh, that's unfortunately where we are heading. Well, uh, we'll see where, uh, how the Australian uh, Zoomers, uh, as they uh, are known, uh, how they uh, react to, well, what is coming, because I don't think that there's sand uh, deep enough that you can bury your, your head in. But uh, I've uh, enjoyed uh, your analysis uh again uh dave uh, i'll i'll have you on again when inevitably the the next uh china uh revelation is uh, reported in the yeah, uh, the, the mainstream media <laughs> we'll, we'll talk tomorrow then because there's going to be a lot more <laughs> okay every, every day there'll be something well this uh, is going yeah. to air tomorrow so who knows it could become okay. old news uh, by by the time people are seeing this, but for my own uh, broadcasting purposes, I hope they wait a day. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit little bit depressing how we ended it, but that's the reality of the situation. Mm. Uh, we we have some serious problems in Australia, economic problems, and that on the ground level is jobs and education, uh, Medicare. Uh, we need to look after people. We we need we can't al allow. The naive one percent to uh, get rich and destroy the middle class because we're going to have rioting in the streets. I don't. I don't fear uh, Muslim terrorists. I fear uh, eighteen-year-old Aussies that have had enough and just want to burn this place to the ground. And I don't blame them when they have broke. They come from broken families and they're not getting an education that they deserve. All and right, uh, I, th I think we'll, yeah, I, I think you're leaving, uh, well, I, I think that's your intention, leaving things on quite a apocalyptic uh, note, uh, but uh, I think, I, I think, I think I'll end uh, your, <laughs> your, your ranting uh, for, uh, for tonight. An hour if you want, I'll rant for another hour. <laughs> no, we've got uh, Dio Beltran waiting for her weekly live stream, so... Uh, we'll, we'll call it for tonight, but yes, uh, lots okay. more to, to talk about uh, in tomorrow, next week's news. Okay, thanks for having me on, Tim. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.